Hello, everybody. This is the Lamley Saturday Showcase. Oh, what a feeling edition. Some of you know what I'm talking about, but we are going all Toyota today. Most, more specifically, Toyota sports cars. Even more specifically, Hot Wheels Toyota sports cars for our Saturday Showcase today. I've got some good ones. Now, just as a point of reference for a minute in this very busy shot, and I apologize for that, a lot of stuff in the background. But some of you, when the Japan Historics 2 came out, said, yeah, cool to see a Mazda, but there's a whole lot of dots and a Nissan in that. Why not Toyota? Well, I'd ask this question. When was the last time you saw a Toyota, a Hot Wheels Toyota? I think maybe this, this super treasure hunt. Maybe it was that mail-in 87 Toyota truck. All I know is that we haven't seen a lot of Toyotas lately. I don't know why. I don't know if there's some there's a gap in the licensing or something like that, but considering all the JDM we've seen, considering all the classic cars we've seen, and all the cool castings, Toyota castings that Hot Wheels has done, it seems odd that we haven't seen any. That's for Mattel to figure out. Maybe we will see a Toyota here soon, but right now it's been a while, at least a year, right? Okay, so let's talk a little Toyota. So let's break away. We're going to go through some Toyota sports cars. That'll be our Saturday showcase. Be right back. Okay, now you may have pondered a little bit why Toyota is gone. I don't know. But let's just talk awesome, cool Toyotas. I'll try and walk through these as quickly as I can. We're going to start with the most iconic and classic of the Toyota sports cars. This is the Toyota 2000 GT. This happens to be a super treasure hunt from 2013. And a couple things about this car. Number one, highly, highly detailed. Number two, this super treasure hunt happens to have a metal base. Number three, that Spectre Flame Red is beautiful. Number four, this model is tremendously cool. And I think I've shown this one on video before. But notice all the cool detail. Now there's some interesting things about this. You also see the front grille is part of the window, which is really well done considering that long, long hood. Kind of a Jag X type look, right? For this one, for those that, uh, whether you want to go back to the Jag or just say the Toyota was the first, whatever. This was a super treasure hunt, so that means there is a regular version. This is the regular version. Has the side stripe. The treasure hunt had the middle stripe. This one only has the side stripe. MC5 wheels. It's an excellent, excellent casting. I think Juna Mai designed this one. This one has a plastic base. In fact, a lot of people thought, well, if um, they thought that the 2000 GT, they don't, that Super Treasure Hunts always come with a um, metal base. They don't. This is one of the only cases. There's a few others. But this is one of the rare cases where the Super Treasure Hunt actually got a metal base. And there's, an act there's a specific reason for that, actually. Um, and I'll just keep walking through these, uh, cause that was, I think a 2013 or 2014 version. This is the next mainline version. Um, the Toyota 2000 GT was actually designed for a Hot Wheels racing series. If you remember the vintage racing series and Hot Wheels racing had a Greenwood Corvette that debuted, um, the Datsun 510 was in the, um, was in the vintage racing series. Anyway, there was going to be a final mix that was all Japanese cars. I think there was going to be an off-road 240Z, a 510, all kinds of cool stuff. And uh, I think the 2000 GT was pretty much ready to go. Um, but we never saw it. And um, the line was canceled. And if you think about how popular JDM now is now, that would have, be a, would have been a legendary set up there with like the Boulevard 510 wagon and the first Japan Historics and so on and so forth. Nonetheless, they had some metal bases, I guess, or some metal chassis that they wanted to go ahead and use. And so they did. Um, on the super treasure hunt. And that might even explain numbers wise. I wonder if like a premium series equals or very similar to the uh, production run of a super treasure hunt. Anyway, enough about that. So two colors on the, um, main line after that. And then we started seeing it's kind of quieted down since this was a special, uh, was it the, um, road tripping series? Uh, we saw a Nissan skyline in this one, a Koska skyline. One of the great errors I found, I actually found just this body, the body. No wheels, no interior, no windows, no chassis, just the metal body in a blister. How crazy is that? One day I'll show that. I still have it. Um, so that was the road trip in series. And then here's the best version, I think. As pretty as that super treasure hunt is, this is from the Japan Historics. Japan Historics 1. Based on an actual uh, livery, racing livery for the 2000 GT. 
um, kind of done with, you know, Hot Wheels styling, but it was the yellow with the green hood, and then they put their own racing logo. Some some logos are licensed, but then there's the Japan Historics, and, well, actually, it's pretty accurate, to be honest, um, but not, enti- not, an, not an exact replica of the race car. I guess I'll put it that way. But a beautiful version. I love the um, gold Watanabe rims on it. Just a beautiful model. And that's the last we've seen of the 2000 GT, other than this beauty from the Retro Entertainment series. Kind of a surprise to see them do a convertible, but they did because this is, and this was an actual 2000 GT, GT that was modified for the movie because was it Sean Connery in it or Roger Moore, whoever was in this? Uh, I didn't even remember which James Bond movie it was, but it was too tall for the roof, so they made it a convertible. Um, and Hot Wheels replicated it. How cool is that? All right, that's the 2000 GT. How about the Toyota Celica? Here's the first release of the Toyota Celica in green. Very much a stock-like version. Although, you know, you see it has the windshield covers and, like, the chin, the uh, chin spoiler. But um, the Deco is very much a stock Deco. What is it? 1970, right? Toyota Celica, I think so, 1970. In green, then it was, I really love that green version. I still think that's my favorite one. Then recolored in yellow. I think June designed this one as well. I really do like how they created the um, headlight covers as part of the window piece to cover the grill, which is part of the interior piece. Pretty genius. So Hot Wheels logo on the back. If you're really lucky, and I typically don't show the variations. I don't have a lot of the variations, but this one was one I actually found. Has the OH5 wheels on it. Really hard to kind of see the difference. MC5 are not see-through. The OH5 are. They're open. Open hold five. That's what they're called. So that's a variation you can look for. Then I'm a little bit out of uh, sync on this one, or, in ter- or a little bit out of sequence. Um, this is actually the uh, a multi-pack version from I think last year, two years ago, which happens to be a recolor of the first edition, but you know done in blue. So a lot of times Hot Wheels will do this. They'll take a a deco from a previous version and then um, release it as a multi-pack version. I love that they did that. Uh, because it gives us more stock versions. So, And then the year after, they did this one. So this one was actually released before that blue one. This is the uh, kind of a racing one, Japanese nostalgic car. Logo on the side. And then I actually uh, one time got kind of lucky and made a trade with someone from Europe who had this version, which is the open hold five wheels as well. Again, kind of hard to tell. If you're not watching with sound, you're like, why does he keep showing the same car? That's the Celica, and that's it. That's all we've had of the Celica. Um, I wonder, you know, it would be nice if there were other versions, and maybe we'll see one pretty soon. I'd love to see it as a Super Treasure Hunt. I'd love to see it in Japan Historics as a car culture model. But, like I said, Toyota seems to have vanished right now, so maybe in the future. All right, this is the AE86 Corolla. This is one of Junimai's first designs, one of his first, um, if not his first JDM design. This is from 2006. Now, if you're familiar with this car, you'll first off notice it has the FTE wheels, the faster than ever wheels, which was something that uh, Hot Wheels was doing at the time. They were releasing standard versions, and then faster than ever versions with the um, their cop- or nickel-plated wheels, so they're faster, smoother. But there's variations in this one now. The standard version came with red five-spoke wheels. I don't have one. Oops. This is actually the standard version with the faster-than-ever wheels. I didn't like the red five-spoke, so I never got it. I should probably get it. But here's the actual release. In white with that Hot Wheels logo on the side. If you can see, are kind of Hot Wheels in that whatever font that is with the black hood. This one has the faster-than-ever wheels, but like I said, it could have five-spoke wheels. But here's the legend. This model was designed by Junimai. This was the first edition, and I think the f- what his initial plan was was to release it in this matte gray. So he released it in matte gray, and, and June can confirm this. I don't think they liked it, or I don't think they liked the color. 
and they decided to change it to a glossy white. So again, going back to this one. So this version is now, still some made it to production, and some very, very early versions of the Corolla were released in that matte gray. So if you're a variation collector, that's one of the cooler ones. Wheel variations are cool, but this kind of like serious, serious deco change or color change, these are the kind of rare ones that are just really, really cool. And that's high up on a lot of JDM Hot Wheels collectors lists. I have that one. I opened mine, which, you know, you may or may not agree with that, but I did. And I think it's great because they do look so different. All right. People weren't really into the A86 Corolla when uh, it was first released by Hot Wheels. And so they kind of, I mean, they had that first edition. It tended to be a peg warmer, kind of like the Datsun 510 was. This one was in a five-pack version. And now this one's very hard to come by. Because people weren't that into the pack. I, I can't even remember what the name of the pack was. Um, but it wasn't something that people were really after. Now people are trying to find this one. Either find the five-pack it's in, or find it loose. And you're seeing prices kind of go up on this one as well. Because it's the A86. It's a legendary car, a legendary drift car. And um, now you're seeing people kind of trying to, like, they, like they're trying to track down the older 510s, they're tracking down the older A86 Corolla. This one is from decades, maybe, I believe. Ten-spoke wheels might look a little out of place on this one, but the deco's nice. And there was kind of a feeling with this one, with the black and the gray, that they had a kind of a panda look to it. But it, you know, obviously the orange and red kind of throw that off a little bit. But they're like, man, would it be really cool if we saw a panda A86 Corolla, kind of that initial D look. And sure enough, just a year later, I think, or a year or two later, Hot Wheels did one. Loose homage to the uh, initial D panda AE86. You can know, you can see that the Hot Wheels logo is in Japanese on the side, and then on the top, JCCS and the Japanese Nostalgic Car logo. I have a couple variations on this one. I just kind of lucked into them. Notice this one has MC5 wheels with the chrome lip. There is also a nice rare variation with a white-lipped. MC5 wheel. Can you see the difference? Chrome, white. Chrome, white. Then there's another one, and I'm the only one who has it. I don't, I'm not entirely sure what this one is about, but this one is awesome. The paint's all messed up because it's the only one that I know of in existence. This one was found in a 10 pack by a collector in Canada. It's totally legit. And I wonder if someone in the factory is just having fun and they grab the small five-spoke wheels, the small ones. Notice if you look at it, how small they are. They're the kind you see on the Mad Manga. And they put the uh, small MC5 wheels on it and put it in a 10-pack. I have no idea if it was just like factory shenanigans or a fill-in or something. Sometimes wheel variations are just so they fill in what they've got. But ultimately, someone found this. I wanted it. I worked out a deal for it and it was traded to me. Then I opened the pack. It's documented on LamberTheGroup.com actually years and years and years ago. Um, but I've always enjoyed having this little five-spoke one. Paint's beat up, but it's still, that's just how it came. You can sit on the top. But still, kind of a cool variation. And I, you know, error, call it what you want. But it's one that was found. It was, came out of the factory. And so, in a 10-pack. And I've always enjoyed having it. Recolored in white with black trim. With white MC5, I know I'm going a little slow here, but I like to give you what I know about these. So reverse panda there. I like the uh, first panda. Then people are kind of getting into the A86, and so you started seeing it released even more. The panda version was popular. Next time they put it in this one, again, kind of a gray and black version, kind of similar to that decades one with a little bit of orange-red trim. Kind of a Toyota racing color, right? And then Zamac. So like all these models, all of a sudden they're like, oh, you know, people like these. We should do more versions. So they did a Zamac version, a Walmart exclusive. This is part of a then and now with the um, Scion FRS. I think it was called FSR. I can't remember. And uh, which is now the Toyota 86. Then one more, one year later, more of a um, first time it really gets a drifting. Well, I guess the first version was kind of a drifting deco, but the Gretti logo on it, 
Brembo MC5 wheels and one thing that made it special about this one this might have been 2014 Super Treasure Hunt additional deco on the hood so you've seen these models they went from not very popular to everyone wanted them and then they started getting special decos and you see them as special models and then even as Super Treasure Hunts that's kind of cool alright this is the only version of this model I have. This is the classic Toyota Supra. This is based on a classic, old, nostalgic um, Hot Wheels. I I think that I mean this casting was released back in what the eighties, and then or nineties, and then this was done for Hot Ones or Flying Customs or something like that. I don't remember, but I kept that one. Not really into it. I mean, I like the I like the car itself, but the casting seems a little old, not as detailed as current. But talking about Supra, and this will be the last car we showcase today. And I wonder if we've done this before. Supra is a very popular model. This was the first version, Fast and Furious, and check out all the detail. This is a one dollar car in that Fast and Furious line. PR five wheels looks perfect with the PR fives. Details on the hood, details on the side. Details on the rear, and even the spoiler is colored gray. This thing was really done full and full, full detail. And what was funny is that was released in a Walmart Fast and Furious line. We see the Fast and Furious lines come out almost every year now. And I think there's some other cool stuff coming, but uh, um, this was released in the main line. Five spoke wheels don't work. Side deco's there. Rear deco's not. Front deco's not. And the spoiler is just plain so it's kind of funny to get those two together but i like the uh, the first version later but this also means a very nice super casting done so we now see the supra coming out and all kinds of cool decos i think it would have been nice to see the stock spoiler but considering this was built for fast and furious they did the fast and furious spoiler on it you know a, a aftermarket spoiler but released in the falcon livery We've seen quite a few of those. This one is great. There was also a wheel variation on this one. Found almost exclusively, not very many of them, but you've noticed that there was the, this is the all chrome spoke MC5 wheels on this one. That one just has the chrome lipped MC5 wheels. Everyone I know of, including this one that I found, was at Walgreens. And these little blue shippers they had. So that was a cool one to find. I opened it. Oops, right? Then recolored for Kmart. This is a K-Day version. Falcon released in, uh, or recolored in gray. All right. Fast and Furious again, this time in a different uh, logo or a different uh, deco. The Super has shown up in several decos, including its famous final one, which we'll get to. So this one, again, gets all the detail. Rear, front, side. Very nice. And that gold color. We haven't seen that deco again. Then next year. Gretty logo. This one in, in a drift look. We've seen that in several drift looks. You see the yellow PR5s in the front. Green PR, or in the back, P, green PR5s in the front. And then, yes, those of you are saying, it was a super treasure hunt. <laughs> pretty good as a super so it gets the hood deco and the rest I need to find another one notice right right here this one the castings incomplete it has a little nick right there on the on the front wheel that's all right though okay recall and then uh, next year another drift version so you have the mismatched wheels people thought it was an error at first but no giving it the drift look which I like I mean appropriate for this one one thing we weren't getting, though, so far, was a stock version. Now, obviously, the spoiler is not stock, but with the Falcon, with the Fast and Furious, with these uh, drifting decos, obviously, this was, this this casting is made for a very specific look. That was a recolor. I like the 10 spokes. By the way, that PR5, this green one, a few of them were found with the 10-spoke uh, wheels. Both the mismatch wheels in 10 spoke. All right, 
Then Fast and Furious again in the Fast and Furious line, this time with the MC5 wheels, but this time no deco. I mean sides, but no front, rear, or spoiler. Kind of a bummer. I guess rear. There you go. Forgot about that. So not horrible. Would be nice to have the headlights, though. But yeah, you have to you have to kind of decipher. There's three different Fast and Furious orange um, Supras, so you have to decipher which one. The PR5 one is the one I think that you want the most, with because that's that gray spoiler. All right, five pack model from last year, right? So this is one of the final Toyotas being shown, or final final Toyotas before they've vanished. But the final final, I think was that Super Treasure. But like I said, it'd be nice to have a stock version. We got this. This one's special in a lot of ways. Obviously, it's uh, a special homage to Paul Walker. This was the car that he drove away in in his final appearance in Fast and Furious. You know, they had to manipulate that because it was after his death. And Hot Wheels did this version. It's beautiful. White front rear deco and perfect lace style wheels on it. This one is my favorite Super by a mile on one of my favorite Fast and Furious models. So, cool to see that one. All right. There you go. That's a whole lot of Toyota race cars. Of all those, I think my favorite might be this one. It definitely could use a car culture presence in the future. Maybe it will. Maybe that gap that we've seen with Toyotas will uh, end soon. I hope. With some cool stuff coming. All right, guys. Hope you liked it. It's a long video, but that's like we do on Saturday Showcase. I'll talk to you later. Bye.